Hello pool players, Ron here. Got a great informative video for you guys today. If you're struggling to learn this game, this video is for you. I want to say this, I've been playing this game for just three years. Started out as a D player and today I'm about a B player. So what I want to do to commemorate these last three years is I want to put together the seven most beneficial drills slash exercises that help me with my game. So without further ado, let's check it out. One of the very first things I did when I started out was to shoot the straight end shot. So here, I'm just shooting the Mighty X, and I'm gonna do this in two ways. I'm gonna first of all just shoot a stop shot. What I looked for here was not to spin the cue ball, not hit any right or any left. So in other words, hit center on the cue ball. And I use an elephant ball here so I can see the stripe. And it's a difficult shot, but it's a great one for our stroke. And then the other version is the follow shot. And this one to me is pure stroke. You must stroke straight to be able to do this. And this was a great one when I started out. Once I got my stroke down pat, then I added two balls, then started performing this exercise. This is called the spot to spot. This was given to me by a great player out on the East Coast. I gotta say this, it was probably one of the most beneficial drills early on for me for shot making and of course for position play as well. When this great player shared this exercise with me he also stressed the importance of performing drills or exercises that are continuation exercises like this if we want to achieve rapid growth within our game. As you watch me perform this drill and the ones to follow I would highly recommend that you include these exercises within your practice sessions. Also, as you perform these exercises, set a goal. Like I remember this one here, the goal was to reach 10 straight pockets in a row. By setting goals, we put pressure on ourselves to try to reach those. Next up is a variation of the spot to spot. This one here is much, much more difficult, but very, very beneficial. With this exercise, what I learned the most was how to aim with spin. You have to predict the throw on the object ball with the spin that you put on your cue ball. Another huge thing about this exercise is it taught me how to pocket spot shots with relative ease. As I tried to master a goal of 15 straight balls pocketed, I spent probably three months shooting this exercise alone. And I kept saying to myself, nobody would do what I'm doing. As I performed this exercise, I knew there was something to it. If I could figure this one out, I knew it would be a game changer for my pool game at the time. And I was right, because I was pocketing spot shots after this exercise like I could not believe. It was so helpful. Let me touch upon something I just briefly mentioned, and that is the continuation aspect of our pool exercises. When we shoot in a continuation situation, our cue ball is never in the same place. It's more like a game situation where, yes, of course, we're trying to play position, but we never quite get perfect. There are rare occasions we do, but in most cases we do not. So we're really trying to recover to gain that ultimate position so that we can keep the run going. Exercise number four is also a two ball exercise and it's an inside spin shot. So we've got to shoot this with an inside spin to get position on the next shot. It is kind of a continuation drill in that we're trying to play to the next ball. Once we hit this ball in, then we'll respot and we'll start over with ball in hand. The idea here is to know how to shoot with inside spin. It's a common shot, comes up a lot, and it's gonna help you in your game. You could, if you wanna take the advanced version of this and just try to play your cue ball to a position and have a full continuation, of not just the two balls, but every time you respot as well. And let me let you in on a secret about this shot. The straighter in you are, the more difficult the shot is. This angle right here is almost too straight 
For me, the shot becomes easier when the cue ball is along the center line of the table. So now we've added two more balls. So we've got a four ball continuation exercise. This is a three rail inside spin exercise. We have to maintain the right angle to be able to continue the run. Now one of the things I wanna say about these type exercises, never change the cue ball position once you run off all four balls. Leave the cue ball where it's at and then respot these balls and start over. Like the other exercises, set a goal. Maybe it's four of these runouts in a row, maybe it's only two. By setting a goal, you'll put that pressure on yourself so that you'll bear down and concentrate even more. Here on my last shot, I'm trying to play that invisible position because I'm gonna be adding that ball back out there. And from that point, we start the run all over again. Another bit of advice is that you don't have to put these balls exactly where I have them shown here. If you wanna put them at the second diamond rather than the first diamond as shown, that will be a little bit more difficult, so you're gonna put more pressure on yourself to try to pocket and continue the run. If you get yourself out of line like I have done here, go ahead and play back to the position you need to to continue your run. That's another version of this exercise. You don't have to go three cushions. If you get yourself out of line, just keep shooting and try to get yourself back in line from the bad position you created for yourself. Another thing, notice how I've placed that ball out there, and that's because it could be in my travel path for my next shot. By doing this, it makes us maintain our discipline to not only just get to the next shot once we reset everything, but also to miss that ball that's in the way. This next exercise is also a four ball variation of the one we just saw. Here, I'm trying to play position within a rectangle out in the middle of the table. I will say this, if you do not make it within that rectangle, keep on playing and try to get yourself back in position. Don't start over completely. That's the beauty of this exercise. You're basically punishing yourself to try to create some sort of angle to get back in position. Now, this is also a rotation situation. You don't have to always go one or two cushions. You can draw like I did there. And once again, try to set a goal. See how many of these in a row you can run. My goal has always been right around four to six, depending on the situation in terms of timing for the day. And also if I wanted to move on quickly, if I felt like I had a grasp on the situation that day. This is a great one right here in itself to get yourself in stroke before match play, uh, during a tournament situation, or even during a tournament. It's a great exercise. If you get yourself on a table before your match and you perform this, I will assure you that you'll be better as a result. And just like with the other exercise I mentioned, you can relocate the balls in any order you wish to make them more or less challenging. Once you feel you've become proficient at the exercises I've just shown you, now advance to the Nick Varner nine ball drill. Let me say this, you can move these balls anywhere you want. And in fact, I'm not even sure if I've got them in the right position per Nick Varner's original drill, but that's okay because you can move these to whatever skill set you feel you're at to make it easier on you or more difficult. And in this case, I'm making it a little more difficult because I put the nine and the eight opposite ends of the table, as well as the seven and the six. Now, the other thing about this exercise, notice that those drills that we just performed, those exercises, many of these shots are within those exercises. You'll see it especially here on the opening shot where I had to play a stop shot to the center of the table on a straight end shot. And now here, which is the spot to spot shot, where I've got to go from the six to the seven and maintain an angle so that I can get to the eight to the nine. Once again, I'm playing spot to spot here. This is what I call practicing with purpose. We built up through exercises to ultimately be able to perform this. So your takeaway for this video 
should be that you need to practice with purpose by performing exercises, continuation exercises specifically, to better your game more rapidly. I hope you found this video to be helpful. Please leave some questions and comments in the comment section below. I answer everyone. Leave a like too. I really appreciate that. That gets this video out there to more people. Thanks for watching. And once again, like I always say, keep on practicing.